welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we've painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's technique video is on how to paint Black Eyed Susan. So let's take a look at the supplies we're going to use and we will get started. So for today's video, we have four colors that we're going to be using. We have Thicket Green, Daffodil Yellow, Pueblo, which is kind of a burnt orange color, and real brown and these are folk art multi-surface paints um just so you guys know this is not an endorsed or sponsored video i just share with you guys the paints that i love using that i've used for years um, for my own business so i know they work well with this method of painting um multi-surface is great because you can use it on any type of surface it does not matter what you're painting if you're working on a canvas or wood or tin or a wine glass multi-surface will work well for you no matter what surface you're painting on so that's what we are using today we only have one paintbrush that i'm going to show you today and that is a number 12 flat brush these are one stroke paint brushes um all the supplies that we're going to use today you guys will be listed in the description so you can always go refer back to it if you can't remember what a certain color was or what brush size those will all be in the description for you and i will also put the website where you can order these brushes that I use, but honestly, you guys, whatever flat brush you have at home will work just fine. Now, I didn't include this little liner brush in our official supplies we're gonna use, but it will get some honorable mention here in a little bit, just um, as a different way to kind of do the leaves and the stems on these flowers. But everything I'm gonna show you today, we're gonna use this number 12 flat, and I, I will tell you why that is as we get a little further along. Okay, so we have our paint. We have one brush. On the table here is some wax paper, and this is our practice surface. So whether you're painting with me in person at one of my live events or if we're painting together on YouTube, there will always be the wax paper. It's a great surface to practice on. Um, it's very cost effective. You know, a couple bucks get you a whole roll of the of the wax paper, and it's just, it's a nice smooth surface and a great way to just be able to sit at your kitchen table and or in your craft room and just kind of play and practice and paint and it works really well. Okay, let me scooch these out of the way. And then we just have a couple other things. We have our styrofoam plate. This is our very fancy paint palette. Okay, we'll talk about how to get the blobs of paint on your plate here in just a minute. But this again, just plastic plate, nothing too, nothing too fancy. Um, here off in the distance is my water basin and that's just to rinse the brush. We're not gonna really use a lot of water in today's technique. I will touch on it a little bit when we're doing our grass, but otherwise it's just there to clean our brushes out. And um, some paper towels off in the distance, and that's that's about it. That's all you need for playing with paint at home. Okay, so let's take a look at our project for today. So this is our sample, and this is just painted on cardstock, you guys. Um, you know, great for you know folding in half, making a greeting card, or even just putting in a little frame for somebody. You could write a little special note. So just a real simple little project. But here are our Black Eyed Susans, okay? And we're gonna talk about some different things while we're painting this today. We're gonna cover painting the, the grassy stems and how those kind of look. They're a little different than some flowers. Um, they're kind of on the, they're more of a wildflower on the edge of kind of a weed, but <laughs> as far as appearance wise. Um, but so they're, the leaves and the way we do the grass is a little bit different than some of the things we've done. So we will talk about that. So we're going to do that part first, get our greenery, and then we're going to add our little flowers. So we're going to talk about how to get the paint on the brush and how to practice the strokes. And we're going to do that all right here on the wax paper so we can paint it together. Okay. And we'll refer back to this, uh, a lot of times as we're going. So I'm gonna set this back here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our blobs of paint on our plate. So we've got a couple different things here. We're gonna start with the green and yellow. And you guys will notice the blobs of paint here. You wanna leave a little space in between, okay? And that's gonna be important for some blending and some double loading, which I'm gonna show you here in just a sec. So let's get some green and yellow. And then we also have on the other side of the yellow, some Pueblo. I just love that. It's just such a great late summer fall color. Love it, one of my favorites. And then over here is just a little bit of brown. We won't need as much brown, so that puddle can actually be smaller. And people always ask how big of a puddle. I usually say start with the size of a quarter. Um, you can always add more if you need it, but that's usually about where we start. Unless you're base coating something big. You know, if you're covering a whole canvas, you're probably gonna need more than a quarter. But for what we're doing for today for flowers, that's all you need. All right, we're gonna start with this green and yellow. So if you guys wanna grab your flat brush, your number 12 flat, and we're gonna talk about double loading. 
And what double loading is, it basically is just putting two colors of paint on one brush. And what that's gonna do is give you color, highlight, shading all in one stroke. So let me show you how we do that and then you'll see what I mean as we start practicing. Okay, so you're gonna start with your brush straight up and down. You are gonna dip one corner or one half in that green and the other side or the other half in yellow. Okay, you can kind of see how it is on the brush. Then in this spot, remember we left this spot in between, you're gonna to touch that brush down, really push it down to the plate and you're gonna to pull towards you and push away and towards you and push away. And you guys can see what we're creating there is what we call a blending spot. And we're gonna do this probably three or four times because we really wanna get a lot of paint up in this brush. So what this is doing is working the paint up into the brush and giving you both those colors. Because what's gonna happen is you'll see green, you'll see yellow, and then kind of a combination of the two and that's where they're blended. So it's pretty cool. All right, let's keep doing that. We're gonna dip each corner again, blend, 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 and just keep swooshing it. Every time you dip, you wanna come back to the same blending spot. One thing that I notice when people are first starting this method is that they tend to dip each corner and then they're painting all over the plate. And that's really not what, we, <laughs> it's not our goal today is to paint our plate. We have, we have more fun things to paint. But what the reason for staying in this, this blending stripe is that it's working the paint up into the brush, not moving it all over. So every time dip in those corners and then swoosh in the same spot. Okay, and like I said, probably three or four times, you guys wanna have a lot of paint on this brush. Now, as you're doing this also, make sure you're really pushing that brush down to the plate. And I'm gonna show you why that's important when we start doing um, things like grass and leaves because you want a little bit nicer edge. And when you really flatten that brush, can you guys see how skinny that edge is? Because the bristles, they're pushed together from blending it on the plate, so very important. Okay, I'm going to scooch my plate over. Now, I will tell you guys, as we're practicing, if you start running out of paint, you're going to come back to your plate and do the exact same thing, okay? So we're going to come over here. We're going to practice. I'll notice when I start running out of paint, we come back here, dip each corner, blend, keep painting, okay? So you'll see me. I'll be going back and forth, and that's exactly what you'll be doing at home when you paint. Okay, so let's talk about our little grassy stems here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. And I'm going to show you here on the wax paper. But when you're doing grass, coming from the bottom and going up is the direction. That kind of gives you control over how tall you want something. Um, oops, I just smudged that. It's a little bit harder coming down. So just from the bottom working our way up. Okay, so let's practice that a little bit. Oh, and I was going to tell you too, you can kind of see when we're designing this shape, the center is where your tallest grass is going to be, okay? Because you want that to be the focal point straight up, and then they're going to get shorter as you come down each side. Okay, so let's practice that here. We are going to start with our brush straight up and down, okay? The green is closest to your body. The yellow is furthest away, and you're just going to be right on this edge. So you don't want it going up horizontal. That'll make a really wide line. You want it just... Can you guys see the angle here? So straight up and down, just right on the edge. Okay, remember we're gonna start down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna come over here and do our grasses because I wanna be able to do the flowers here so you guys can see them. Okay, so straight up and down, we are right on that edge. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna coast right on that edge and I'm gonna come up and just curve just a little bit. Okay, and we just have a line, nothing fancy you guys. Um, I will tell you now, the harder you push down, the wider your, your grass or your blades will be. So if you want more of a wide version, that's fine. You can press a little harder. In this case, we really kind of just want to keep them all a little bit on the skinnier side. Okay, so we're just going to try to stay right up on that edge. All right, so that's kind of a tall center one. I'm going to come just to the left of it here. I'm going to start down right next to it. I'm gonna to touch and I'm gonna push and slide and this time I'm just gonna curve a little bit to the left. And I'm gonna to come to the right of it and do the same thing. And you guys can see we're just coasting right on that edge. I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna curve a little bit to the right. So my tallest one was there in the center and we have one on the left and the right. Now I can tell right here that I am running a little bit low on paint. So remember what we said, we're gonna come back to our plate, blend, Okay, reload some paint, and then we keep going. Okay, so here's our tallest one. We have some, we have one on the left and one on the right, and I'm just gonna fill in now. I'm gonna do some more on the left-hand side. 
And remember, we want them to be a little shorter as we're coming down the side. So they're curving just a little bit to the right or to the left. Okay. I'm back over at my plate here. I won't show you each time I pick up paint, but I might tell you. So I'm back over here reloading. Remember, blend, dip each corner, blend. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the right hand side. So remember, we're just on the edge, barely pushing. You want to stay right on that narrow edge. Remember, the harder you push down, the wider those, those grasses are going to get. Okay. Okay. So now, this is nice, but it looks kind of almost like a like a hair piece. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we need to fill it in. It's not full enough. So this is our basic shape that we have going on here. Now I'm going to take this same brush and I'm just going to do some just kind of filler a little bit shorter. So for example, I'm going to start back in that middle where we were and this time I'm going to come up and I'm just going to cross over to the right. And then I'm going to start that same spot and I'm going to cross over to the left. And we're going right over the strokes that we did. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of work my way left to right and just kind of do some little lines. I'm going to lift this up so you guys can see it here in a sec. But so I'm going to start um, to the left now where we were. I'm going to come up and I'm going to cross back over. I'm going to cross to the left, move over a little bit, cross to the right, cross to the left. And then you just sort of tap some lines just to kind of fill in. So we started with our main tall center, one on each side. Remember, we worked our way down. And now it's just simply, we're just kind of filling it in. It needs a little filler. It needs to be a little thicker. Okay, so let me see if I can lift this without going too crazy. But can you see here? So there's our tall. And then we just have shorter ones on the way. Filling in there. Okay, you remember earlier that I mentioned the little skinny brush. Okay, I'm a big fan of the little skinny brush. The reason I'm not using it today, while it's lovely to get skinny lines, it really is. The best part about using something like a flat brush is that you can get two colors on here instead of one. Okay, if you were just going to come along and use your little skinny brush, which is great, you'd have to just decide. You'd have to do all green and then maybe go back and do some yellow just to get that highlighting in there. But when you use the flat brush, you can do two colors, you get your blending, and you get color highlight shading all in one, which is why when you look at this, you see green, you see yellows, you see kind of a combination of the two. So that's the benefit. But if you're just getting started and you don't love how wide your grass gets using this brush, play with the skinny brush, play with that liner brush and see if that works better for you. Okay, so we have our grass in place, or our stems. Now, the, the wildflower type flower does not have big leaves, okay? And you can see we just have some little, they're almost like little grassy buds that go up and down the stems. So what we want to do is we're still going to use the same brush. I'm going to come back and make sure I have fresh paint. So you guys will know, you will feel it when that paint starts to run out. But all we're going to do now is we're going to take this brush and instead of sliding, we are just going to tap along this stem. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Now this time my brush is still straight up and down. Okay, I'm on that edge. This time though I have the green on top and the yellow is closest to my body. Okay, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to start and kind of work my way down. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to touch and lift and touch and lift. And I'm going to kind of do one on the left hand side of that grass, come down a little further, do the right hand side. So we're just literally touching and lifting up. Okay, and we're just gonna tap, tap. I'm gonna grab just a smidge more. And I'm gonna come over here. So it's just a tap and a tap. You can push a little bit, that'll make them a little wider. But I want you just to kind of come down and just sort of fill them in. Okay, I'm gonna come on this side. I'm gonna start towards the top. We're gonna tap and tap and just work our way down. Okay, we're not sliding like we did on the grass. I'm just going along and just tapping just to add a little bit of dimension, not really leaves, okay? Because these flowers don't really have big leaves like a sunflower or a, or a daisy or something would. Okay, so you can see it on here where we just tapped. And I even came down and just kind of tapped some just lower on the bottom there. Okay. All right. So that is our grass and our stems and we got all that on there. I'm going to come over to my water. 
and I'm going to rinse out my brush because we're going to use the same brush for our flowers. Okay, let me grab a paper towel here and we will get this dried off. Okay, all right. So this is a brush basin I have here, you guys. You can you can use whatever you have at home. A styrofoam cup is fine, a plastic cup, a glass. Now, the one thing, if you find yourself painting a lot, though, a couple of things I would recommend, and actually, I think I'm going to do a video on this, like supplies that you, you know, that are helpful when you're painting at home. A nice brush basin is one of them. The reason is, it, I can't tilt it because there's water in there, but in the bottom of this side, there are ridges, kind of like steps, so they start a little higher and go down. And the nice thing about those ridges is that it cleans out the bristles of your brush. So you basically put it in the water and rake it back and forth, and it sounds very funny, but it cleans all the paint out for you. So that's, that's the advantage of having something like this. Now again, you can run your brush under a faucet at home, you can dip it in a cup of water. Don't worry about having all the supplies to get started with this. All you guys need, a couple brushes and some paint, truly. That's all I started with years ago. <laughs> a couple brushes, some paint, and some wax paper. So that's all you need to get started. As you get more excited about it and you do more, then you can kind of add stuff. Now, the one thing I will tell you, a nice set of brushes makes all the difference. So obviously, I've been teaching folk art one-stroke painting for a long time. So I, I'm a big fan of the folk art one-stroke brushes. Um, but really, any, any nice brush set out there that's going to give you kind of a variety of brushes with a flat and a liner, that'll be great. Okay, we are going to hop back over to our plate now, and to do these flowers, we are going to do the Pueblo and that same puddle of yellow. We're going to do the same brush, and we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to double load. So you're going to dip one corner in that burnt orange color, which I love, and then you're going to dip the other corner in the yellow, and now we're going to create a new blending spot right here. So remember what we did before. We touch it down, pull it towards you, push away and towards you and push away. Look how pretty that blending spot is. That's a pretty spot. I love, we're getting into that late summer fall colors. I just love it. All right, remember three or four times. I'm gonna dip each corner, blend, blend, blend. Dip each corner, blend, blend, blend. And remember, we want lots of paint on our brush. You want it to be goopy. Okay, so lots of paint on there. I'm going to set this back over here, but you guys know the drill now. When you need to pick up more paint, you just come over, dip each corner, blend. And remember, you want to keep going in that same spot, same blending spot. Do not paint all over the plate. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at these flowers, and we'll talk about how to build them. We'll practice a few here, and then we'll add them to our, our grass over here. So basically, for these flowers, if you watched my video on cone flowers, similar. The difference is with cone flowers, you really push down hard and make really short, wide petals. These are going to be a little bit more long and, and kind of spindly. Black Eyed Susans have a more real thin, thin petal. If you've seen them, you know, growing on the side of the road or in your wildflower bed, they have a longer, skinnier sort of petal. So that's what we're going to mimic here. And then we will come back and add our little brown top. So similar to cone flowers, but a little spindlier. Like they just, they have a different vibe to them. So that's what we're gonna practice, okay? And to do these, we start at the bottom, similar to what we do with the grass, at the bottom and come up, okay? So let's practice on our wax paper. Let me show you how we do these. Now, the key here also, sorry, I keep grabbing this, is you want all of your petals to come up to one center spot, okay? And that's where we're gonna end up putting the brown. We're not gonna do that yet. But what I mean by that is you kind of need to sort of have a target for all of your petals to go in one. It's very easy for your petals to get awry when you're first doing this. So what I would suggest with your brush is just take one of the corners. And I'm going to start up here so you guys can see a few of them. And just make a dot. Okay. So what this is going to be eventually is going to be where your brown dot is. But it's basically the top of the flower. Okay, so by doing that, it visually gives you a guide on where these petals go. Otherwise, it's very easy for all your petals to come up and not attach to anything. And that's, that's not what we want. Okay, so remember what we said, we start from the bottom and work up to this center spot. We're going to be straight up and down. Now this time I have the burnt orange color closest to me, that Pueblo, and the yellow is on top. You can also reverse this, which I'm going to show you. It just gives the different colors to the flower. Okay, so we want to start here and come up to the dot. Now, you don't have to go straight up, okay? 
For the left petals, I am going to kind of curve to the right. And for the right petals, I'm going to kind of come up and curve to the left. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's touch our edge. Remember, straight up and down, we're right on that edge. I'm going to push forward as I'm sliding up. And then I'm going to stop up at that dot. Okay, let's do another one right next to it. And this is pretty tall. We might make them a little bit shorter, but I just want you to see the technique so you can feel it. Okay, I'm going to start to the left of this one. I'm going to touch and curve. Remember, we're curving to the right. All right, I want to get a couple petals over here. So I'm going to start next to this first one we did, but this time I'm going to curve to the right or to the left <laughs> and come around. And then I do another one here. I'm going to start, slide, head towards that center and lift around. Okay. All right, let me grab some more paint. Again, you guys will feel when you need to reload some paint. All right, that's a basic. I'm gonna come down here and let's kind of tweak him a little bit. All right, remember we start with our dot, okay? So I'm gonna start not quite straight up and down in the center, but down below it, I'm going to be on the edge. I'm gonna slide, I'm gonna curve to the right and up to that dot. I'm gonna come a little bit to the left, touch down, push, slide, and bring that around. Okay, and each time, remember we're heading towards that dot, that's your visual. That lets you know where the paintbrush is headed to. Okay, let's do a few more over here. I'm gonna start just to the right of that first petal we did. And remember this time, I'm on the right side, but I'm gonna curve to the left. So let's start here, I'm gonna touch, I'm gonna slide and come up to that center. I'm gonna come out a little bit, do the same touch, slide, come up to that center. And in this case, I'm gonna come even a little further out and add another petal, okay? There's really no wrong or right as far as how many petals, you guys. It's whatever visually you think looks good. Most of these up here, I have five on the bigger ones and some fours down here on the littler ones. But truly, it's whatever size you wanna make it. So let's do one more for practice here. And maybe we'll add a whole bunch more petals just so you can kind of see the difference. Also, this time, I'm going to switch the direction of my brush. So here, we made our dot. Before, we had the Pueblo closest to us and the yellow on top. Okay, I'm going to flip that just so you can see the difference in how these colors look. Okay, so remember, not straight up and down in the middle. You don't want a, just a real straight flower. You want to give it a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to start here. I'm gonna to touch down, I'm gonna slide up to that dot and stop. I'm gonna come out a little bit to the side and slide around to the right, up to that dot. Can you see the difference in color here? With that yellow on the bottom, you get a little more yellow than you do the orange. All right, I'm gonna come here and this time we're going to start on the right-hand side, but we're gonna curve left. So we'll come here, I'm gonna curve up to that dot, come out a little further. Okay, and now I think I want to add one more over here. So let's curve here, and you can even curve another one. So see the fullness there, the more petals, the fuller it looks. And you could even just get a little crazy and do a couple shorter ones here on the edge. Okay, just to kind of give it more of a, a full wider look. Okay, so just the difference in colors here. This was the orange was on the bottom when we were going up. And on this one, the yellow one is on the bottom. So just kind of a different color variation. And if you're painting something like this, where you're doing maybe a whole canvas or a tin plaque or something, switch it up. You know, do some with orange on the bottom and some with yellow on the bottom, just to kind of give a little variety there. You know, why not give it a little, a little difference, you know, a little definition. All right, I am going to come back here and pick up some more paint, blend, swoosh it back and forth, dip each corner, blend, blend, blend. And I'm gonna come back over to where we had our grass and let's add some flowers here. Now here's what I will tell you about placement of flowers. I want you guys to put your flowers wherever you want flowers, okay? A lot of people get very caught up in painting the stems and then worrying about attaching a specific flower to a specific stem, no. That's not what we do. <laughs> we get our grass, then I want you to put flowers wherever you want there to be flowers. I knew I wanted a tall one in the center and then for them to stagger their way down, okay? You can always come back later and add a stem to that flower. Easy enough. Put your flowers where you want them. Worry about the stems at the end. I hope that makes sense. 
Okay, so let's come over here. I'm going to put one up top and then we'll add a couple just coming down. And don't worry about if your green and yellow is still wet. That's okay. If you happen to pick up a little green or a little yellow in your flower, it just adds dimension. So it's okay. All right, remember, we start with our dot. I'm going to put a dot right there. And I know this is a little bit further away from the camera, but I'll lift it up so you can see it. Okay, we're going to start down. We're going to start right on that edge. This time I do have the orange still on the bottom. And we're going to start down here. Whoops, I got a little globby paint there. Okay, we're going to start down here. I'm going to start, I'm going to slide, and I'm going to curve up to that dot. And then we're going to come to the left. I'm going to curve around to that dot. I'm going to come out to the right, curve into the dot to the side, and come here. And I'm going to do one more here just to add a little bit of a little bit of width. So that's a five petal. But again, there's no right or wrong, you guys. It's however many petals you think will fit or you think will look good. Okay. All right, let's put another flower here. Now this time I'm going to reverse it like we talked about. The yellow is closest to me and the burnt orange now is on top. Let's make our dot. And remember we're starting coming up from the bottom, swinging up to our dot. So I'm going to be here up to the dot. I curve around here. I'm going to come to the right of this one. Slide up, slide up. And just for fun, we're going to do another petal there. Okay. All right. Let's do one more smaller one here. Always picking up more paint, you guys. You will feel when it starts dragging. Just grab some more paint and keep going. All right. Let's do a smaller one here. I'm just going to do our dot kind of down on top of the grass here, a little bit lower. And we're going to start here and slide up, here and slide up. And then I'm going to come do two more. So this is going to be a smaller one. Okay, just almost like it hasn't quite opened all the way yet. All right, we're getting cute. All right, the last thing we need to do to make these flowers finished up and make them beautiful is we're going to add that brown on top. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. If you guys do have a little skinny liner brush, you can certainly use this to do the dot. I'm going to show you my polka dot method. But if you had this little brush, you would just dip it in the paint and then just kind of give it a swirl you know, to make your little tops of the flowers, which are our brown dots here, okay? Since I was just gonna use one brush today, all I'm gonna do is turn this brush over and we're gonna use the handle. If you've painted with me on other videos, you know how much I love polka dots and this is the best polka dot thing you can use to make your polka dots, but we're gonna use the wooden part, so not the brush, but we're gonna use that very tip of the handle here. And we're gonna come back to our plate where we have our puddle of brown and all I'm going to do is kind of dip into the brown. Now, if you were just doing a straight polka dot, you would dip and then tap and dip and tap and see how that gives you a nice polka dot every time. Love it. We're going to do kind of an enhanced polka dot, if you will. So I'm just going to pick up some brown paint. Okay. And I'm going to come over to one of our practice flowers here. And all I'm going to do is touch right where those meet. Remember where our dots, our dots started? And we're just gonna swirl and make kind of, it's not really a round necessarily, it's almost like a little bit ovally, a little flatter, like it was squished a little bit. Okay, let's look at that again. So I'm gonna come back over here into my brown dip and I'm gonna come back to this one. You're just gonna touch and then just kind of swoosh it around. Just swirl it around into an oval. Okay, let's add some of our brown over here. So I'm gonna come and just swirl this guy. Okay, I'm gonna dip again and come over here and swirl this guy. And then I'm gonna come back and dip one more time. And this guy will just be a little smaller because he's more of a bud. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are cute. All right, let me lift this up so you can see everything we did. I'm gonna put my brush in the water there and get that out of the way. Okay, let's lift up the wax paper so you guys can see just a different angle. Okay, so here's our practice ones. That was kind of getting our shape. This was a little fuller, and this one was really, really full. A little more of just kind of a full-blown little flower there. And then over here, here's where we added them on. Okay, so we've got our grass. Remember, we started in the middle with our taller, and as we spread to the sides, they got a little shorter. Okay, and some were crossing left, some were crossing right. It's all about making it look full. 
Okay, there's no right or wrong on how many petals you do or how many grass blades you have. It's totally depends on what you're painting and how you full you want it to be. Okay, so remember after we did the grass, then we sort of tapped and that gives those little, they're not quite leaves, but they're just kind of part of the stem as it's growing. And that took care of our greenery. And then we came back and added our flowers. And remember, the most important thing is do not worry about where you have stems. Okay, I want you to put your flowers where you want them. And then you come back with that brush and you can pull a stem down if you feel like it needs one. Okay, that's the key. Put your flowers where you want them. The stems will follow. <laughs> okay, let's put this back down here. I will grab our card one more time just so you can kind of have a look at that. And I think we are good. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope it was fun. Um, we are at that time of year where everywhere I drive around, there are black eyed Susans growing in the ditch and I just love it. I am originally from Maryland on the East Coast and the black eyed Susan is the uh, Maryland, Maryland state flower. So kind of one of my personal favorites. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. That will let me know that you watched it and you enjoyed it. There is also a subscribe option. It would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel. That'll let you know when new videos are coming up. Um, and as always, everything will be listed in the description. The, the colors, the type of paint we're using, the brushes, all these extra supplies will be listed for you so you can refer back to it. The best thing, you guys, about painting along at home is that you can stop and start this a million times. That's the beauty of, not, not that I wouldn't want to paint with you in person because that's also one of my favorite things, but it's really neat that you can be at home and start and stop and rewind and start and stop until you can really kind of perfect things. On that note, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to message me or add them in the comments and I try to answer them as fast as I can. If there's anything I can help with, any troubleshooting, I would be more than happy to. So thank you guys as always so much. If I just really appreciate you being here. If there's anything you'd like to see in the future, drop that in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you the next time we paint together. Thank you so much. Have a great day.